And this is, I guess, lean, this is the other direction, leaning into the veterans out there. Lots of you have raced a lot of marathons so far. Butter my bread. How is everybody doing? Hope you had a great Tuesday. Yeah, it's Tuesday when I'm filming this. You're watching this on Wednesday. We're diving right into the studio. Busy day. So I didn't do any outside filming. Just uh, had to get a lot done today. Therefore, we're focused in here. Six tips for marathon racing. What I wish I had known basically six months ago before the Amsterdam Marathon and the New York City Marathon as I prepare for, yes, the Hamburg Marathon on April 19th, 2020. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bookmark this vlog and I'm, I'm going to make mental notes and then also make notes in my Google, ca Google Calendar to go back and re-watch this vlog basically like once a week, the last three weeks of this training block so that I can remind myself uh, about these tips that I have learned from, once again, from Amsterdam and New York City. I made a vlog like this maybe nine months ago now, uh, what I wish I would have known uh, before racing my first 50K, all right? So I thought, you know what? A lot of people enjoyed that vlog. It seemed like they learned a lot from that. Um, so therefore, we're gonna transition now to road marathon racing today. And it's interesting, crazy timing. Today, literally, as I was kind of, as I was formulating my thoughts, uh, an email arrived from New York City. So uh, registration opens up, I believe, January 30th for those guaranteed entries. Let me know. Actually, question of the day, part one, who is racing their first marathon ever in 2020? All right, that's just option one. We'll do another question of the day here in a minute. And let's dive in, all right? Again, I hope you had a great day. I had a baby easy run today. Just so you know, there it is on your screen. It was solid. All right, let's dive in. Six tips for marathon racing. What I wish I had known. All right, here we go. So, so critical. Tip number one. Before you hop on an airplane and fly around the world to a marathon, before, yes, before you even hit that registration button, study the course. Study the course. And this goes for, yes, other distances as well, but I can't tell you, can't tell you how important this is, is to get to know the course that you're going to be racing on. Um, these days, on Strava and a lot of other web, well, not a lot of other websites, but other websites, elevation profile maps are becoming more, I would say, accurate and more readily available, where you can see, for example, going into the New York City Marathon. So I raced Amsterdam first, New York City second. I felt way more prepared for New York as far as where the turns were in New York, uh, where the elevation gains were, mostly because I wanted to make sure I was really dialed into the five bridges that I had to run over in New York City. Uh, so I can't stress it enough. Before you hit register, make sure you study the course so that there's no surprises on race day. And uh, if you have time, and especially if you're a local, but if you have, I don't know if I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to see for the Hamburg Marathon, but basically if you have time to drive some of the course, just to familiarize yourself with the surroundings. And again, those elevation, uh, when you're gaining elevation at certain points in the course, I like to know, okay, I need to just take it a little easy here because I know there's a 150 uh, foot rise coming up in about two miles. So anyway, that's my tip number one. Know the course as best as you possibly can. It helps so much. It relieves a lot of, um, I would say it relieves a lot of anxiety as well about, okay, what is ahead? And okay, real one last point is there's uh, companies out there that make uh, stick-on tattoos. So you can actually get an elevation profile chart. I forget, I'll try and find it, uh, the name of this company. But basically, so then when you're running and you kind of forget, okay, when is the next big climb or, or downhill? You can look at your arm, you put the tattoo right on your arm and then it washes off like a couple days later and it has the elevation chart. You could probably do it with a marker as well, just a little bit. But anyway, I think that's pretty neat. Tip number two that I wish I would have known a little bit more before racing my first marathon is mentally prepare for the crowds at the beginning. New York City was so energetic, so incredible. So was Amsterdam, but New York was a whole nother level. And I was buried a little bit back at the starting line, and I definitely was not prepared to 
Bob My Way. You can see this footage on your screen right now. It was like, it was crazy. It was like I was playing football and like trying to dodge people tackling me through the first basically half mile. And it threw me off just a little bit. I would say it wasn't until about the mile mark before I feel like I calmed down after that starting line area. Now listen, so a lot of marathons aren't obviously as big as New York City, but just prepare yourself a little bit mentally, especially for these big city marathons for the crowds at the beginning. It was something that um, I guess after Amsterdam that was pretty easy to get off the starting line. I wasn't prepared as much for New York City. So that's my second tip. Just prepare that, you know what, I'm probably going to have to fight the crowds for the first mile or two, three maybe, and before it starts to open up a little bit. And tip number three that I wish I would have known, pacing groups is so essential. Find your pacing group ahead of time, all right? Get the discussion going, and this is a tip of the day. The most marathons I have seen recently, at least the bigger ones, have a, a Facebook group dedicated to uh, that particular marathon for each year. And if you can join that group, let them know, you know, I'm running this year, I've been accepted to run the, to run the race, and then you can get the discussion going on those Facebook groups and say, hey, is there anyone out there uh, who's gonna be running 8.15 a mile? Or is there, any, you know, whatever pace you're shooting for, and then the, the trick is to meet up on maybe even the day before, but definitely on race morning before the race and say, okay, who's running 815? Okay, we've got our 10 people here, maybe even 20 people. Let's go, let's work together. I'm telling you, so, so that's, that's honestly, that's one of the reasons I've transitioned from ultra running to marathon racing on the roads. There's a little more communal feel when it comes to race day, because you're there's more people and there's specific paces that people are trying to run it's just really, it's different. Uh, I don't know. I would just really encourage you to find your pacing groups and maybe on Demore Global Running on Facebook, maybe we should start some topics that are centered around at least the bigger marathons, Boston, New York, Tokyo, that's coming up March 1st uh, for pacing groups that people that want to run together at whatever the pace may be. Um, I think that might, that might be something I start. So keep an eye out on Demore Global Running for that. And tip number four that I wish I would have known before race day is make sure you hydrate, but don't overhydrate, especially during the race. Hyponatremia, I can never say that. There it is on your screen. Hyponatremia is the, I'll just say the medical uh, condition where you actually drink too much water during the race and your sodium levels can drop and it actually can be a little, it can actually be dangerous. Um, and so I think in New York City, I maybe, honestly, I think I hit the aid stations too often. Now, obviously if it's hot out, if it's humid out, you gotta be, you know, watch yourself. So it's, it's a balancing act and your body should, uh, through training, your body, you should learn your body's um, needs when it comes to hydration. But I must say, um, I was not, I probably wasn't taking in enough now, unfortunately, I believe all they had was Gatorade at the aid stations in addition to water. I think it was Gatorade. Maybe it was Powerade. I'm not sure. So I didn't drink as much uh, electrolyte-based drink because I wasn't. I didn't have a bottles at the tables. So anyway, just putting it out there. You want to hydrate during the race, but you don't want to overhydrate. Plus, you might have to take some bathroom stops along the way, and you don't want to do that if you're trying to run fast. So hyponatremia, just beware. Um, yeah, and the best thing is to practice during training, all right? And speaking of practicing during training, tip number five, here we go. Practice with your gels. Practice, I cannot stress this enough. I, uh, I, I, I'm, I am, <laughs> this is almost priority number one during my, this training block leading into the Hamburg Marathon. I wish I would have practiced way more now. It's a financial investment, all right? Sometimes gels, especially the ones that I use, like they can be a little expensive. So if you're practicing, and I'm just gonna say, my goal, and I was, I'm gonna put it out there for you too, three times, all right? Practice on three different runs during your training block leading up to your marathon, you know, on your long runs with your gels. A couple different reasons. Number one, just getting that motion and that, you know, figuring out the rhythm of ripping open the gel and putting it back while you're running. If you want to run faster, you know, you've got to keep your pace going even when you're taking your gels. 
Um, so it's that, it's that whole motion and even just getting your, yes, the swallowing motion so you don't choke. And then your GI, um, making sure your, your stomach is handling the gels well as you're running. So I did not do a good job before Amsterdam or before New York practicing with my gels. My goal this time around is at least three times at faster, well, faster paces. Uh, yeah, not race pace, but faster paces with my gels. And tip number six, what I wish I would have known before race day, it's crazy. The race truly does start at mile 20. You hear that over and over again in interviews, in, uh, you know, in podcasts, in articles, where you hear it all the time about the wall, right? I'm telling you, it's true. I, you know, you kind of get a little bit of a big head as an ultra runner. It's like, oh, I can race. I can do 26 miles. Like, come on, I've raced 30 miles and 50 miles before. Like, I can do 26 miles. It's so crazy. When you're running at higher speeds, your body starts to struggle around mile 20. Now, I will say in New York City, it didn't really hit me until about mile 23. So I think if your fitness is at a high level and you're really dialed in, uh, you could push off the wall until mile 23. I really do. And um, in Amsterdam, I just blew up way too early because I went out too fast. But in New York, I felt pretty solid until about mile 23. So um, I guess my, and my, so my take home, your take home message is practicing that mental focus and resilience the last six miles of your long runs leading up to your marathon race those last six so if you're doing a 20 mile long run at mile 14 when your watch hits mile 14 you are just boom a light bulb goes off in your head and you're like okay focus and resilience focus and resilience from here to the end of your long run practice that during your training at least two times, preferably three or four times, so that when you get to the wall in your race, whatever marathon you're racing in 2020, you're prepared to push through and not to uh, fall apart, which happens to the best of us, as I found out uh, in Amsterdam, and yes, even to a certain extent in New York City. There's my six tips, what I wish I would have known before racing my first marathon. I hope they help whoever out there, especially for the rookie marathon racers um, who, are, who are watching and question of the day, what is, and this is, I guess lean, this is the other direction, leaning into the veterans out there. Lots of you have raced a lot of marathons. So question of the day, what is your one tip that you wish you would have known before racing your first marathon? Oh, I cannot wait to read your comments for this one. I cannot wait because um, again, I'm gonna bookmark this vlog and then go back and watch this in basically the first week of April, second week, and then the last, uh, April 19th is my next marathon. All right, everyone, that is it for today. Thank you for watching. Oh, so fun. Studio's coming along. Did you notice? Did anybody notice a little more extra lighting uh, pizzazz here in the studio? We got some spotlights on the shoes now. Just subtle, subtle spotlights just to give a little extra pop. Oh, loving it. All right, everyone. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. We're going to toss it back on the right to the Amsterdam Marathon vlog. That'll be on the right for you, my first marathon ever. And then on the left, we'll toss it back to the five tips I wish I had known before racing my first ultra marathon or 50K. All right, everyone, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. See beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.